Let's get into 691 large scale photovoltaic electrical supply systems. You know, this is um, not going to be complicated. We're not going to say anything new because 690 applies, but 691 kind of recognizes that it covers the installation of large scale PV electrical stations not under the exclusive code the exclusive control of the electric utility. I don't think I'm gonna say this, but guys, double check me. Doesn't this only apply, uh, and there's a text somewhere, and it's, I'm sure it's in my book, when you're supplying this power directly to the utility? In other words, I'm not supplying yeah. it to somebody's house, yep. right? right. <clears throat> and the way this is organized, since I chaired the committee that wrote this thing initially, um, was we, we used some examples in other parts of the code. Uh, it's got a very, basic scope with some long informational notes about, you know, uh, Article 90 and things like that. But then uh, the intention is that 691.4 is like an expanded scope. It basically gives you more detail on what we're really talking about because you, you can't really cover the scope in the scope. <laughs> Scopes are supposed to be pretty short, okay? But you can expand upon those things. It's kind of like what's intended here. And that's what 691.4 is all about. And then we have 691.6 and 691.7 that tell you it has to be, um, in, it has to be designed and have an engineering design that can, the, there's a report given to the HJ if they want one. And then it's inspected essentially, the construction's inspected to make sure it complies with the design. It's all done by engineers and those reports are made available to the authority having jurisdiction um, in those cases. And then, uh, while, you, while you're while you doing Bill, I just went ahead and I just put it on there. I think there's no reason to go any further than that. Jason, did you want to say something? I just wanted to stress what you said, Mike, which is that this doesn't replace, you know, 690. And we, this is kind of the biggest misconception that we get. This provides, or is intended to provide, a clear compliance path for those systems that don't really fit very well into 690 alone. So this should be used by any responsible engineer with 690 to determine what are the appropriate materials and methods for that system. Well, it, it, it's not going to a building. It's applying directly to the electric utility. You got this great big thing out there, you know. So it, so let's go to 690.8. Uh, Direct current operating voltage, large scale PV supply says calculations must be included. Remember that was the voltage that we talked about, uh, Peter? We did that, yeah. that seven, all that kind of stuff. Like, listen, these guys, they have a system to calculate that. We're not going to be going to 690. And then we had the disconnecting means. It's almost kind of like an exception to six. These are the exceptions to 690. Right. These are just bigger exceptions. Okay, well, you know, when it comes to voltages, um, we're going to go over here. Okay, when it comes to disconnecting means, well, engineering design uh, and isolating of equipment, fire mitigation. This had to do with the arc, arc of the arc effect. fault. Well, you know, I mean, we're going to do something here. So they have an offense grounding. Okay, well, we have 691, um, 691, that's six, what is that? Oh, the documentation. You got it. Yeah. How are you planning on doing that? So basically, it's an engineering report. And then you got. We went back to. I think it was seven back here that I showed. Um, that that you you got to show that you complied with what you were doing there. Right. Uh, Brian. Well, I mean, I think um, in my mind, you know, six ninety one can be summarized every single section with one word or one statement. Consult your engineer. Yeah. Consult your engineer. Oh yeah. Consult your engineer. I mean, 691 basically is a bunch of rules that say, hey, we know what the code says, but here's permission to let your engineer actually design the system um, it, it versus you trying to sit here and figure it out yourself. And this is, this is one of those areas where I love Fred Hartwell, but he's wrong. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. You, you know what I love about this? There. It's so cute. You know what I mean? I have to tell you a story. I was at an annual meeting. I don't remember what. Belinda, my daughter, was with me, and we're at the annual meeting. You know how the voting, if you guys been there, you know how the voting works out like that. And then one person gets up and says one thing, another person, and then I get up, and Phil Simmons gets up there, who's a good personal friend of mine. He gets up there. I don't know what Mike was smoking. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, and he goes into all this other stuff, and I'm like, well, you know, Phil has a major problem. And so we're doing it. And my daughter says, 
Dad, I thought Phil was your friend. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah, but did you hear what he said about you? <laughs> I said, what did he say? He said, well, well, you were an idiot. You were this. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Well, was that a bad thing to say? <laughs> and so, Tom, you, you got that little yeah. note here from Tom today. Yeah. Well, you know, those guys got it wrong. <laughs> That's right. Well, Fred doesn't know what he's doing. Go, go ahead, Bill. Go well, ahead. Tell me about Fred. Go ahead. What's the deal? Understanding why we wrote 691. The reason we wrote 691 is because 690 is in the code. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it in a nutshell. See, there, there's no article in the code for combined cycle natural gas plants. It just isn't in there. Okay? So nobody needs to know that they're not going to use the National Electrical Code to inspect a combined cycle power plant. Okay? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, there may be an office building on the site. Okay, fine. You can bring the inspector in there, and they'll do their little thing. That guy does it. That's really cool. You want to you want to walk around and look at it? Sure, but you're not inspecting a darn thing in that plant. Not at all. Well, think about this. We have the NASH electric code that covers premises wiring, and it starts at the service point, right? Then the utility wiring has their own standard, the NASH electric safety code, right? It's behind the fence. It's it's regulated control. This is not quite the same, but it's almost the same, and that is where you have behind the fence, this, you know, out there in nowhere, feeding only the utility. We can use 690 as a basis, but then Brian, like you said, well, yeah, but <laughs> that's a basis, and we have to make decisions that are completely different because the we're not on a house in supplying, you know, a 5KW system, so. Yeah, and, and there were, you know, articles written, IAI magazine and things like that, that said, you know, your jurisdiction should have a, an army of inspectors going out to these 100 megawatt plants. You should have at least 100 or 200 inspectors going out and inspecting these <laughs> 100 megawatt idea. plants because there's stuff going on there you need to know about. And it's like, no, you don't. Okay. The no, financiers no. that are involved in these billion dollar projects, <laughs> these are billion dollar projects they are way more particular than any local inspector oh, yeah. could ever be. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. the ones with the money. So the, the point was, let's have some basic information in here, and we're really trying to help a local jurisdiction to know when they should be caring about stuff and when they should let the, the engineers that are working on the stuff do it, but provide them with the documentation. Right. Yeah. Provide and, them with the documentation. And that is what's big deal. What, what right. they should be asking for, exactly. All righty, we're done with 691. <laughs>